Okay, people, so not uh, I would say a couple months ago, I was uh, driving to work and I had a container of coffee and it was a little hot and so I wanted to cool it off and uh, I put the container up um, in front of the radio close to the air vents and I turned the air duct, uh, the, the louvers to point down and, and, and to uh, um, direct the air, which I had turned on to cool, to direct the cool air into my coffee, my hot coffee to cool it down quickly without having to put it outside the window. And so um, somehow or another, I managed to tip the angle of the coffee cup too much and I spilled some coffee into um, the duct for the uh, air vents. And so that duct is not sealed um, airtight or watertight to the uh, to these vents. So some of the coffee that got in there spilled out and dripped down onto this radio below it. And so the radio's um, frame or the the um, the casing of the radio has a lot of holes in it. It's not, you know, it's very open and ventilated. And so that coffee got inside of the radio and it, it kind of got into a couple different places and caused the radio to start malfunctioning. So um, it happened once before. And um, after some time, I'll say maybe a week of it acting funny, it uh, started to act um, normal again. Then it happened the second time, and I promised myself I would never spill coffee in my radio again. It happened the second time, and uh, that time it really, truly um, spilled into the uh, radio again, and um, it it didn't it didn't correct itself. So um, yeah, that's what happened, and uh, it's time to fix this radio so that's what happened now what you're looking at right now is the finished product of after i fixed it but once it started acting funky the biggest thing that happened was these buttons the volume the map the home mode and the forward and backward and eject buttons would not work properly and so you would press them and nothing would happen yet the backlighting still worked the reset button still worked and uh you know the unit you know came on like normal and it would even play music if you know it had already had a command to play music from the last time it was on so it was very intermittent with that with that mode of failure however after a while it just completely stopped accepting button inputs and so i was very you know that was very that made the radio very useless in fact if you weren't if you're not in the right screen on this head unit the um the uh, steering wheel buttons won't work either. So now um, what I want to do is just show you a little bit about the repair process I went through to get this thing back up and running normally like it is now. Um, it is fully operational just like new and um, hopefully you will learn a little bit about this and some repair stuff as well as surprisingly what the failure mode turned out to be in terms of the actual component that failed inside the head unit. So I just wanted to uh, give you guys a backstory first so basically um, just to catch everyone up to speed um, we took the radio off the car took it apart and we found some corrosion on the main board Ooh. with to clean that corrosion off came off pretty well with isopropyl alcohol then I decided I wanted to also hit it with some flux so I got the soldering iron out heated it up put the flux on the board and in all the terror that is my hand um, with the hot soldering iron, I knocked a resistor off the board. It was a tiny weeny weeny surface mount um, SMB resistor. So um, that got knocked off the board and I had no clue what it went to. I didn't know if I needed it and I didn't know the value of it. I looked all around the floor, could never find it. So following that, I went ahead and I contacted Pioneer I ordered a, um, um, I asked them if they had a service manual available because I couldn't just Google it. I couldn't find it just Googling. And they said, well, you have to go to Pack Parts and order um, anything you need from them. I contacted Pack Parts. They did not have the service manual on their website, but they did have it electronically. So they put it on their website and sold it to me for $20 on a CD, whatever. It's a lot, it's worth a lot more than $20 to tell you that right now because to send this back and have it repaired will cost you a lot more than $20. So they, uh, I bought the uh, manual, took a few days to get the CD. Then I, of course, 
took the CD, put it on my, I mean, put the file on my server. All that aside, I was able to look through the manual and find the revalue of the resistor. So then what I did is I said, you know, I looked on DigiKey, I looked on Mauser and Newark, and, you know, they had the 20, they had the 22 kilo ohm resistor, 1 16th watt available for, you know, a couple pennies, but it takes days to get it, and I'm impatient. And um, it's going to cost, you know, a multitude more in money to um, to just ship one or two or three resistors. It'll cost you $10, $12 to ship the box in three days shipping. Maybe three if you're lucky. I don't know. I didn't even bother to really check. So what I actually did is I took apart um, my original um, GM factory radio and took the main board out of there right here. And I looked on this board with my brand new multimeter and found a resistor that was close in value. What it came up as when I found it was an 18 kilo ohm resistor. I placed that on this board and um, that took a little bit of work, but I got it on the board. And now when I checked the test points around it, it coming in at 21.6 kilo ohms. So I'm like, wow, I don't know what happened there. But when I measured it on here, it was 18. When it's on here, it's 22. Obviously, there could be resistance in the traces leading to the thing, but when I test it at either side of the resistor's leads, it comes back at like 21.6 or whatever. So, whatever, I'm happy it's in place. Now, here's where the learning actually comes from. Um, <laughs> when I didn't know what this resistor went to, I was in a panic to get it back on there. But studying the schematic, studying the block diagram, studying the actual PCB layout, that is all in this service manual. This Pioneer service manual was great. All of that stuff is in there. I realized that this resistor that I knocked off is a biasing or a balancing resistor to uh, balance out the left and right channels. Um, I think that's what it's doing. Essentially, it's grounding the left channel of the Sirius XM input into, it's, it's, it's balancing it or grounding it as it goes into the um, uh, into the input selection IC. So I don't use Sirius XM. Um, I don't even have the module to plug in the back of the unit. So if I had just left the resistor off the board and kept going, it probably would have been fine. I had no clue. So, you know, <laughs> I studied and I got it on there anyway, just in case. Because if I ever want to sell that unit in the future, you still want it to work, right? So um, anyway. That was an adventure. I guess this is just a quick summary of where I am up to this point. And now I can resume the normal diagnostic procedure for the head unit. I can go back in and finish doing what I intended to do, which was to take off the front LCD plate, um, which I don't want to lift this up right now, but I need to get inside this front LCD and check the buttons on the front of the uh, movable LCD screen to ensure that, um, or the movable display screen, and ensure that there's no liquids in there, no shorting, and of course, no corrosion. But that's a quick update as to where I am at this point.